Hello everyone, Mark here, Mark's Max Muscle, and today we are comparing Paul Dillette and Phil Heath, not only their physiques, but we are comparing their genetics. That's right guys, up close and personal with Mark's Max Muscle. I know you guys, you guys watch my videos, you guys comment sometimes, and I usually don't have the time to read those. But when I spend a little bit of time on a project, like I did with the uh, Best Genetics of All Time video, I take the time to read your comments because I would like to answer your comments, concerns, if I can. Now, I said Paul Dillette may be the best genetics or may have the best genetics of all time, even went as far as to say that he had better genetics than Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, things of that nature. But hey, I don't hear anybody arguing that. The The thing that bothered you guys was that I've never really mentioned a whole lot about Phil Heath. The gift. He is gifted genetically. That's, that's why they call him the gift. And yeah, I'll admit, I apologize to you guys. I dropped the ball a little bit. But if you are comparing genetics of these two, and we're going to have some fun, guys. We're going to have a look at other versions, for instance, this is Phil Heath, 2014. He had a bubble gut, of course. This is 99, Paul Dillette, and you could see his physique just didn't have the sting that it used to. But really, does the gut have anything to do with genetics? Not really. The shape of your abs, yes, but not a bubble gut, really. So we're going to use pristine, good versions of these guys in their prime, and that way we can see the true genetics. But you know what? It also has to do with the back development. And this was my argument of Paul Dillette. You can see Phil Heath, he's 110 times better. If you're going to judge it in a bodybuilding competition, I mean, come on, come on. But if you're talking genetics, if you have a keen eye here, you can see Paul Dillette has lat insertions. He just doesn't know how to train. Everybody says, anybody that knows anything about Paul Dillette can testify, testify, it says that he never even did any back workouts, but he still had lat insertions. And another thing, here's Phil with maybe probably even more training, more back training than Paul Dillette did. And you can see they are right on par as far as the genetics are concerned. Now, considering that little explanation on the lats, I mean, think about it, guys. Phil, I mean, people say he didn't train that hard. Obviously, the guy was training hard. It's just they're comparing him with a guy like Branch Warren, who was pretty much killing himself in the gym. Maybe not the 110% best genetics, but good genetics nonetheless. Phil, he trained smart. He knew he had the best back. He knew he had to have the best back to win the Olympia. So yeah, he trained his back. Considering that Paul didn't even do any back training. I'm sure somebody will comment in the, the comment section below and tell us, you know, he only did this and that and the other thing for his back and that's it. The guy was the best of the best. Much taller, which is genetics, guys. Much wider clavicle, which is your genetics. And one other key goodie is the shape of those abs. A very small set of abs, which makes for nice long obliques. And that's all genetic goodies possessed by one Paul Dillette. Also, I added another picture behind Paul here because this was a, a closer up shot. You could see the detail a little bit more. But I put another one behind him to show that he also had massive calves. Massive calves because... Muscle, the ability to grow massive amounts of muscle, that's a genetic thing too. And Paul, obviously, you look at the, the biceps. If this guy wasn't training hard, could you imagine if he stepped on the gas pedal? You'd see some more cuts in the biceps. I mean, the guy would be bigger. They say he didn't even do squats. Just a couple machines for his legs. Wow. Wow. Genetically, and the, the pose itself, I would give it to Paul. Here's the front lat spread, and you can see, guys, Paul, he just did, I don't know, I don't know what he did. He didn't, he didn't open up, I don't know. Maybe it was a genetic thing. If it was a genetic thing, the reason why Paul couldn't open up, I mean, yeah, okay, I'll give it to Phil. Could you imagine if Paul could open up like that? We'd be having a different discussion altogether. 
Paul would be winning the the pose, which he's not, which he's not. He's too unsymmetrical, guys. Now, before we get into the side chest, I decided to go with the 2013. You can see now as a whole, I think 2011 Phil Heath is a little bit better as a whole, more streamlined, but obviously look at the delts. Look at this, guys, the wheels. 2013 was a monster for Phil. So yeah, might as well use his best version when you do the comparison. And Phil from the side, from the front, he was narrow. But from the side, he looks thicker. He looks thicker. Look at the amounts of thickness on the legs. But is that genetics? Hmm. I don't know. For a guy that never did squats, Paul looks pretty friggin' huge in the legs. Look at the delts and chest. Look at the delts and chest on Phil. Phil, you know, ultimately the height is a genetic favor for Paul. But I, I would give this one to uh, Phil Heath. And the side tricep, the thing of it is, guys, genetics have nothing to do with poor posing. Poor display. You can't even see anything. If you look at the tricep itself, I mean, Paul had, he had it going on. And he also had those calves. I'm talking downtown. Hmm. Bo Lewis, I'm talking downtown. Now here's 96. Not as good. You could see the tricep not as stingy. Might have worked on his wheels a little bit more though. I can tell you that, Paul Dillette. But I think from the side, we're going to go with Phil Heath. Nothing to do with genetics, so I don't think. Here's the back double, and here's the back and I told you guys he has lat insertions. It's just so petite. And it kind of makes sense. If he was doing the, the shoulder training, shoulders just ballooned up, arms, a little bit of arm training, arms ballooned right up, wheels, calves, things of that nature. And if he wasn't doing back, of course, not going to grow. But he has the attachments. He's also uh, not leaning back as much as Phil Heath. And that creates for a thick back. Could you imagine? And I've showed this picture before, if Paul Dillette did take his back training serious. And also dieting is a th another thing too, Phil Heath. You think this guy cheated on his diet? I do not. So conditioning, Paul was pretty conditioned. Obviously, this is not his back, but lower half glutes. The guy was probably eating cakes. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Now, the rear lat spread is a concern of mine. He's leaning forward, first of all, which is a terrible move. Phil, he, he leans back towards his back, and Paul leans towards his face. His face. I apologize. But here's the thing that concerns me. Does he have scoliosis, baby, please? Does he have a tilted spine? Paul Dillette, because that's contributed to genetics, right? Poor posing. Poor, poor posing. We're going to go with that. And the possibility that it is a genetic trait. Why well, he is lopsided in those lots. So for you Phil Heath fans. You know keen on his genetics being the best. Yeah there's a definite back. Now to be truly fair to the gift. This is uh, Phil Heath earlier on in his career. And I believe he had some sort of hernia or something. He had some operation on his midsection which kind of took away from the aesthetics of the abs themselves. So this is prior to that, I assume, I assume. And it is the genetics of Paul Delat's abs that, you know, head and shoulders above Phil Heath, the doctor, the gift, whatever you want to call him, guys. You should have called Paul Delat the gift. This guy is truly a genetic freak. And here's the most muscular, a pose which I could easily give to Phil Heath. Narrow clavicle, narrow chest, but look at the amount and pounds and pounds of meat that he put onto his delts. And really, he does, he doesn't look narrow upstairs at all. Paul, what can I say, guys? Not too many people have those arm attachments, those bicep, tricep, quads, calves, everything, the guy. This is genetics at its finest, at its finest. And being six foot three, to me, that's just your your ultimate checkmate. That's it. That's it, guys. But at the end of the day, who's the better bodybuilder? Phil Heath. Not even close. Not even close. He was 
perfect, not posing, his posing uh, skills, but he he could hit the shots perfectly each and every time. They'd call for rear double, he'd boom, rear double. And, you know, he was much better at training. Uh, so it's, it's all strategy, you know. You go into the gym, you know you have a plan, you got to work on your back. Paul Dillette more likely just went into the gym and, you know, pump them guns up every single day. He's got the genetics. He can still win. Oh, and one other genetic goodie that Phil does have over Paul, which I never really mentioned too much, the forearm length. He has much shorter forearms. So, yeah, Phil does have a couple of things on Paul. Obviously, the better back genetics that may might play a part in it but i made it a you know i made a good argument i think latin insertions there didn't train his back still had some latin insertions hit thumbs up on the video guys i figured i would do a rebuttal not to argue with you guys but to to see you guys eye to eye to meet you guys eye to eye did phil have the best genetics of all time he had some darn good muscle genetics and he cultivated that but structurally speaking, no, not even not even close. Ditto with Lee Priest, not even close. Structure counts, then, you know, everything else. That, everything counts. Everything counts. Hit thumbs up on the video, guys. Love and appreciate all your views and uh, opinions, so let me have it in the comment section. And also, let me know another genetically gifted bodybuilder that we might have forgot about. Kai Green, for instance. Anybody else? Anybody else? Have a great one, guys.